This record is called Glide. I wanted to write a bunch of songs that had something to do with things that glide. Uh, big fat cars with chrome, chromed emblems on them from the 40s and 50s that, that uh, moved so smoothly. And, that, and the title tune, Glide, actually brings that all out, brings all those things to the front. All of the other songs on the, on the record relate to that somehow. And so I felt it was, it was time to make a cohesive record. You know, all of my other records have sort of gone in different directions and then sort of try to end up back where they started. I think a record should be a snapshot of wherever you are at that point in your musical journey, for a musician like me especially. This is my 12th record, solo record, and I think that I've learned a lot along the way about how to make the next record, and part of that is being learning how to play the band and how to cast you know, songs, the musicians in the songs, how to cast uh, the songs in order in the record, how to make the record you know, be one solid piece one big piece of information instead of a bunch of different songs just scattered out through the record. And you have to sort of reevaluate who you are at that point. We all listen to each other as a band, as a live stage band, and we're in a good practice of listening to each other on stage, so we did the same thing in the studio and sort of there was a lot of call and response going on in the solos and, and throughout the songs. And I have this wonderful band of musicians who are top-notch musicians, could play with anybody. But they just want to go out and play with me when, we go, when I want to go out and, and play live. It's great. What a wonderful position to be in. So I felt like I finally had this band that was self-maintained. And we could play any kind of music. But I, so I had to write these songs and write them sort of about the band, sort of encompass the band and bring out their strong points on, all, all the way through the record. And uh, I feel like I finally have that kind of a band, that I can do that on a solo record. Uh, Todd Parks holds down the bass as well as anybody could, just is very creative. Luke Bulla is, uh, is one of the best fiddle players, violin players, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever heard. Doug Belot, the drummer, raised this band to another level when he started playing with us. He just, he just took us to another place where I didn't know my songs could go. Guthrie Trapp is a wonderful guitar player, plays electric and acoustic. We had all that covered. You know, these guys don't seem to have any, uh, any boundaries that they need to, to honor. So they're like me in that way. You can cross genres and nobody, no one should even know. Rodney Crow came in and sang, and Rodney was my first choice of singer for the record. Long Hard Road is a song that Rodney wrote a long time ago and it had a big hit with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band on country radio, and I played on that song. It was a beautiful, it's a beautiful song. Mama played a French harp then, and Daddy made a saw blade bend, and raindrops played the tin roof like a drum. Tony Rice is an old friend of mine and uh, one of the major innovators of acoustic guitar in this whole world. I brought Tony in to play on this record as just a, just a wild card, just to throw something in sideways to give us a different slant on, on what might be predictable. I was driving home from uh, the Gulf, down in the Gulf, with the family on vacation, and uh, we were traveling in two cars. I got tired. I started listening to country radio stations <laughs> somewhere in Alabama, and uh, a Travis Tritt song came on, and I was so concentrated on this record, trying to finish this record, and I actually thought I had the record finished. This was in, this was in like, February, and thought I had the record finished last December. 
but but was this was something hanging on me and I thought you know I need there's something else I need and at the same time the same split instant uh, a marriage made in Hollywood ran through my head he stared back up at a hot gray sky we ran his life and then he died if you jump off a building brother beware my friend Jimmy woke up in it no time to smile no time to wait the opening song on the record is called Bounce, and uh, it comes from uh, Edgar Meyer and Sam Bush and I. Uh, we wrote the song together on a tour that we did uh, last, last year. Uh, just the three of us running around the country playing just whatever came out of our heads. We've always been, you know, working together in some form or another uh, and and I think it shows and I think you can hear it through that song throughout that song of us bouncing off of each other and so the song is uh, appropriately titled Every time I come back out with another record, I'm, I'm, I'm building a little bit more of an audience. And uh, I think that people by now know my habits pretty well and know that I'll be back. And it's something that I'm going to keep doing. It's not it's something that I'll ever stop. I, I, I need my own identity. Throughout history, instrumentalists have never been as popular as singers. Singers rule the world. But words can get in your way. and. I think the, the English language has always had its barriers. Plain, played music is a, it has no barriers, it's universal. Uh, the guitar that I play, a dobro guitar, is so capable of so many emotions and it's so vocal in its qualities and I can get any emotion across that I want to with my guitar and without using any words. It is my voice.